been trying to record for a week now and I don't know whether it's the humidity um, because it's been particularly humid here this summer or just the topics that I've been wanting to talk about not wanting me to talk about them you know um, but I'm gonna push through I'm gonna try because I want to and tonight I will film Wine and Weird Tales because the music box from hell needs to be finished. It's a good story. It needs to be told. Um, updates on crochet. That is not over. Crocheting a new dress pattern. So that's going to be really nice. Um, hoping for a bit of a, a 50s, 60s style vibe. Probably more 50s. Right, we'll see how it is when I'm finished. Um, so yeah, there were things that I wanted to talk about, but I was, you know, it's been very ineloquent over the past week. And maybe also because I've been working a little more, and for some reason that turns my brain to mush. I've been actually, for the first time in my life, having to sleep in the middle of the day after I've eaten lunch. Um, that has never happened to me before. Like, usually in the past, if I ever fell asleep during the day, I'd wake up just feeling gross and like I shouldn't have done it and it was awful. But now I welcome the sleep. It just it, it just you have to sleep, you know. I think it might be the humidity. Um just mixed with getting up early and and whatnot. Um maybe also not sleeping so well at night, but again that's starting to fall into place as well. Sleeping at night. Um so yeah, anyway, the things that I had been wanting to talk about that I was finding difficult to talk about were um, it was the topic of um, geographical locations and the energy of those places and how they make you feel good or bad um, whether that's supernatural or scientific uh, I probably would lean towards more of a scientific, um, no, maybe I wouldn't, I don't know, I'm very on the fence about these things. Um, on my second cup of coffee, which, you know, just, maybe shouldn't be. Uh, anyway. So the other day I was trying to film, and I was trying to film about, um, a couple of things. One of the things I won't even bother mentioning because I don't think it really doesn't want me to talk about it yet, ever. So anyway, um, energy lines running through geographical locations, which um, I think Aboriginals call song lines in Australia, and um, they all, they've also been referred to as ley lines by, I can't remember the author's name, There's someone else. Um, anyway, and my experience with these, this particular phenomena, or, you know, a thing, <laughs> to get technical for a minute, um, and I was reminded of it again yesterday. When I went walking in this particular place near where we live, um, which is a very quiet, very tranquil part of the province. And um, the contrast between this place, which is very, has this beautiful, amazing light, and it's just the, the way it makes you feel is very light, um, just in every way. If you're feeling pain of any kind, if you're feeling anxiety of any kind, it like lifts away as soon as well for me as soon as I step over this certain point in the particular walk step across a certain point and it all lifts away it all becomes very light and very peaceful and just you can feel it the feeling is is like you could reach out and touch the peacefulness you know it's amazing and then I got to thinking about how it con it contrasted greatly or significantly with where I used to live in Australia, which was the um, upper half, middle of the upper half of the Blue Mountains, uh, west of Sydney in New South Wales, um, in a place called Lura. 
and Lura was right next to Katoomba, where I worked at a hotel called the Carrington. And I, I honestly believe that much of the Blue Mountains is um, is occupied by these energetic lines, whatever you want to call them. And um, I, I don't know whether all of them are specifically good or bad, like negative, positive, negative energy. Um, but I know that it's turbulent because the Blue Mountains is definitely, I, I don't know, I haven't visited that many places in the world, but I can definitely say it's unique in its atmosphere. The people are unique, the, the, um, the vibe is unique. And um, I think it's a, probably a mixture of the good and the bad of these energetic lines that run through the earth, ley lines. Energy lines, let's call them energy lines. Um, so there's a mixture, and at a specific place that I used to work at, the Carrington Hotel, I think that was a spot of bad um, energy lines. Um, not a pleasant place to work or to be um, for me or you know for other people as well. I know it affected some other people quite negatively. <coughs> Um, the Blue Mountains is an interesting place. It's special. You just say that it has it has something that nowhere else has in the world. You have to go there and experience it for yourself to sort of understand. And I also think that um, m much as it is with wherever you visit, um, you go there once, you will feel one way or the other about it. But um, you have to live there for. A, a certain amount of time to experience the full effects of the place, obviously. <laughs> um, I know for me, the reason I moved to the Blue Mountains was because I was visiting there one day and it was autumn. And autumn is a particularly magical time, especially in the upper Blue Mountains, because it's very misty. Um, honestly, the mist comes and goes throughout the year at random times, but particularly in the autumn I think it gets quite misty and it's very magical and very beautiful and with the fiery autumn leaves and the trees especially are very beautiful there's a lot of you know the um, deciduous beautiful autumn trees and so driving through the streets of um, the good part of Lura you know the prestigious posh upper class part of Lura was a very magical experience so it, it, the fit <laughs> Feelings like, yeah, I've got to move here now, I've got to buy a house here now, which is what I ended up doing. And um, that was an interesting experience, to say the least. Uh, very interesting. Coming from um, where, I, you know, where I essentially came from, which was the Southern Highlands of New South Wales, um, completely different atmosphere. So, I think the way I would describe it is the Southern Highlands felt very surface level, psychologically and spiritually, felt a lot more surface level. There, there wasn't much depth, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, in that respect. But the Blue Mountains was it's just a wealth a deep descent into psychological, merged with uh, spiritual, um, occur I don't know, occurrences, and, and the, the atmosphere is just, it's a very deep, heavy atmosphere in the Blue Mountains. Um, I keep losing my train of thought, I, I honestly think it's the humidity, it's it's really something this year. So anyway, I was talking about that and my camera either kept shutting off or shutting down and I was talking about how, I mean, there's so many things that I could talk about. Um, and honestly, the Blue Mountains is, is a spectacularly beautiful place, especially Katoomba. I mean, 
Yeah, Katoomba Lura is it's beautiful. It's a beautiful place to be and to, to see, to physically, to, you know, to, to experience, to just visit. It's pretty amazing. Um, for instance, one morning I remember, and I'd never seen this before that, I had been having to get up quite early to go and work at a day spa in Katoomba. So driving from Lura to Katoomba. And I had to park right near um, a very popular tourist destination, sightseeing destination called the Three Sisters, which is a lookout. And you look out across the Blue Mountains and there's um, a formation of rocks, which they call the Three Sisters, which in um, Aboriginal mythology, I think, it, I don't know the full story, <laughs> pretty bad, probably should know, um, but Three Sisters were turned to stone. Um, and it was probably because they fell in love with some men from another tribe and then their own tribe sung, sang, sung, sung them to stone. <laughs> um, that's probably how the story goes. But yeah, the three sisters are there. It's pretty interesting. You can actually climb them. And that's also an interesting experience. Um, so anyway, one morning, I went and I parked my car. And I noticed there were a lot of people congregating over at the lookout and everything. So I went over and... From the lookout, you look across the valley and there's the hills. It's very, very rugged, very, very beautiful. And the space where the hills was, like, obviously you can usually see down into the valleys and stuff like that, was just a sea of mist and clouds. Like all the clouds that come from the sky and just settled in, in an ocean within the mountains. And then they were cradled, like a, like a bowl of mist. Well, that's why it's hard to... I think I posted pictures on Instagram, I'm not sure, probably did. Mm, actually, if I, if I manage to find them, I'll post a picture, just so you can quickly have a look at that. It was spectacular. And that's the sort of thing I mean by it. it's, it's, it's a magical, beautiful place where you see these things and you're just like, wow. That's what it's all about. And then you move there, and time goes by, and you realise, uh, no, that's not what it's all about. There's other things, there's other... Um, psychic, energetic occurrences, um, atmospheres. But like I said, it's turbulent, you know? There's anyway, digressing. So just, I'll quickly mention it and then I'll just stop filming because honestly obviously it's, it's too hot today to film more i don't know maybe i've just prattled on and this is all bullshit and i've completely wasted my time there are other things that i wanted to talk about but um who knows if i will get to talk about them <sighs> anyway so up the back from the house that i bought which um was not on the posh side of lura wound up being on the dark side as, you know, some of us from the dark side called it. The dark side of the road. It wasn't really the wrong side of the tracks, as you would call it. It was more like the wrong side of the highway. And, um... Oh, that's another interesting story. Anyway. So, I bought this house, and... There had been a massive fire in the 50s that wiped out a lot of the town. And, I don't know, probably more, like, up, up a bit further, which I think is Wentworth Falls had actually wiped out a lot of houses. I don't know if it killed a lot of people, but I'm assuming it, it did. For reasons I'll go into it some, some way to date. Um, this may go on to a part two of this particular story thingy, whatever it is. Anyway, so the house I bought um, on the property, which I think was about a quarter of an acre, uh, it sloped upwards. And my house was more obviously down towards the front of the property. And up the back, there were the remains of the property that used to be there that burnt down in the fires of the 50s. So it had stuff like uh, a well, it had old bed springs and old stove doors and bits of burnt china, bits of burnt crockery, um, burnt bottles, burnt glass, just stuff that had been left there, which was, I always found really odd that no one ever sort of cleaned it up or cleared it away, which is funny because I never did that either, and I lived there from like 2009 till 2016, so 
I guess I just never went up there because I didn't feel like I needed to or even wanted to. Um, the woman that I bought the house off, which I learned from, you know, other neighbours, was a little mad, apparently. Um, something else I'll talk about later. But yeah, so that that was that, and I want I, for reasons I'll go into at some other date, I believe you know people did die in those fires. Um, so yeah, but I still to this day don't really know what the energy running through my house was. I think it was turbulent, and I think it was probably a, a big mixture of good and bad. So yeah, this is something else I would like to expand on, I would like to talk more about um, energy lines and the good and the bad and where they are and how they affect people because I honestly believe that they affect people more than anyone realises. It's quite a big thing. Um, but yeah, I'm going over time so I'm going to stop now because it's hot. <laughs> I probably don't want to finish my second cup of coffee because I'll freak out and start panicking later on. As I want to do after too much caffeine. Isn't that right, Teddy? Um, I... Maybe I'll continue filming something else. Who knows? Uh, if you've watched this, thanks for watching me ramble on for uh, 16, 17 minutes. You're a champion. Um, if you haven't, I don't blame you. I, I don't know. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope we can start some sort of conversation about this. It's very interesting. It's interesting scientifically and spiritually, which is something I will always say and always believe. Science, spiritualism, 